What is going on, Petro Heads? I got the brand new 2020 BMW S1000RR on my left, and on my right, I have the Ducati Panigale 959 Corsa. This one's mine, this one is not, but I have this one for the entire week. Currently, I am at BMW Motorcycles of San Diego. And these guys were nice enough, as you already know, to loan me the bike for the entire week. As part of my ownership experience, I wanted to put these two bikes to the test and see what makes them different because there are a lot of you guys out there who want to know what is the difference between a Ducati and an S1000RR. So while I have both these bikes in front of me, I thought I'd take both of them out and compare their characteristics. Not so much the power because we already know the S1000RR is a 200 plus horsepower leader bike that will outperform this motorcycle. But we want to talk about the characteristics, how it makes us feel, the riding dynamics, the comfort, all those things are what's to come in this video. So I hope you stick around, I hope you watch to the end, and I hope that either you agree or disagree with my comments and you will write down in the comment section down below what you agree with, what you disagree with, and basically your opinions. Let me know what your thoughts are on the subject. Let's get going. You know, it's a really difficult decision. Do I start with the S1000RR? Do I start with the Ducati? I think we'll go for the red hot pretty woman Ducati first. Here we go, on the road. Let's see how I can compare this to the S1000RR right off the bat. If the S1000RR is your dirty librarian, this is definitely Pretty Woman from that 1980s movie, Pretty Woman, if you catch my drift. This, my friends, is a totally different beast. The Ducati is kind of like a gorgeous supermodel who wears a beautiful red dress every single day with a short little mini skirt and stockings as well as high heels. This is what the Ducati 959 is or the Ducati Panigale series in general. The Ducati Panigale series, as I've tested them all, make sure you go check out the videos. These bikes are always on. There is no off. As soon as you turn on the engine, it's loud, it's aggressive, it's 100% full of character and personality. This motorcycle is brimming with personality. There is no time to rest when you're riding this motorcycle because you're literally in a plank position. Although the S1000RR is also a race bike, this is more of a race bike than anything else you could ever imagine. Because this motorcycle is homologated. It is a direct one-to-one -one of the MotoGP motorcycles of yesteryear. Now I say yesteryear because the V4S would be the current homologation of the V4R or even the new Superleggera that just came out. It is a motorcycle that when you look at, it looks as if it's going 150 miles an hour just standing still. The example that I'm riding right now is 155 horsepower. It's not a slouch by any means compared to the S1000RR. The S1000RR has 50 more horsepower than this. But regardless, this is not a slouch by any means. And as a matter of fact, Ducati, their own selves, they call this a superbike, and it really is. Because of the handling characteristics, because of the raw power, because of the raw speed. But the 959, once again, it is a motorcycle that is a red-hot supermodel, and it honestly, it, there is no middle. There is no middle grounds with this motorcycle because it is fast, it is aggressive, and the throttle response, it's either on or off. What I love about the Ducati Panigale series, as opposed to the BMW line of motorcycles, is that the Ducati Panigale series, like I said, is at level 10, and it's always on. The exhaust is so loud and aggressive, and that's something I absolutely love. And a lot of people are wondering why I never chose to install an acrophobic exhaust or something similar to that for this motorcycle. And the answer to that is that it just does not need it. The exhaust is loud enough and it's already aggressive enough and I'm sure it can get better. But I'm happy at the point where it's currently at and I don't need any more than this. I'm pretty happy with what I have. And that's one of the main differences between the Panigale series and the S1000RR motorcycles 
is that right off the bat, these motorcycles sound freaking amazing. But there are drawbacks to owning a Ducati Panigale as well. And some of the drawbacks are that, you know, even though it is constantly on and it is constantly at level 10, sometimes you just want to cruise once in a while. You don't want to be on 100% of the time. And with the Ducati Panigale, you just don't have the choice. You either like it or not, you're always going to play at level 10 with this motorcycle. And that drawback reflects on the ride quality as one of the things that I want to talk about now. The ride quality in this motorcycle is harsh. There is engine vibration. On the street, I would not suggest buying this bike as your primary mode of transportation. If this is going to be something that you're going to da daily ride, you're going to be super uncomfortable with it. It's not something that I would suggest that you do on a daily basis. This motorcycle is just not street friendly and I learned that the hard way. So if you haven't watched the five things I hate about my Ducati Panigale 959 video, make sure to check that out. I won't talk much more about it because all everything I have to say is in that video. So you can check that video out for more detailed information about what I think. It's advisable that you get something like, in a, like a V4S because it is going to be more comfortable for the street. The ergonomics are, are much better in my opinion, comfort wise. This motorcycle, you're literally sitting on top of it, while the S1000, you're sitting inside of it. And I'll talk more about that as we ride the S1000RR. For this motorcycle though, you're sitting on top of it, you're in a deep plank position, just not comfortable at all. And there's a reason for that, and I don't fault the motorcycle or Ducati for that matter. The fact of the matter is that this motorcycle is homologated once again, and it is derived for racing purposes. It is built, number one, first and foremost, for racing purposes, and number two, to be ridden on the street. If we're talking comfort-wise, it is not a comfortable bike for the street, but if we're talking track-wise, this bike is definitely a winner in every way. Overall, I would consider this motorcycle very, very exciting. When I test rode this motorcycle uh, back over at uh, Newport Beach, I just fell in love with how loud it was, how aggressive it was, and how much personality this, this motorcycle had. It gave me feelings that I've never felt before in my entire life, and I felt like I was invincible. I felt like I can conquer the world with this motorcycle. I'm not even joking you, I just, I felt so powerful riding this motorcycle because it just makes you feel special. That's one of the characteristics of owning a Ducati is that they are special bikes and they translate that specialness onto the rider. So in conclusion, this motorcycle is your average pretty woman, you know? She's got high stockings on, she's got a gorgeous red dress. Everywhere she goes, she's wearing long high heels and she turns heads every single minute. Everywhere you go, she gets attention and everywhere you go, people are going to talk to you about it, people are going to ask questions, people are going to take pictures of it. And this is a, an attention getter of a motorcycle. I understand the appeal behind Ducati ownership. Alright ladies and gentlemen, I think now it's time that we hop on the s 1000 R. You know like that old commercial, that old clap-on commercial where you clap and then the lights turn off and on? Let me see if I can replicate that and see if this motorcycle will magically appear here. Alright, so here's what happened. I wanted to take the bike over to the exact same spot that we were originally in and where we left off with the Ducati. So I started recording after that and I was going to do this whole trick thing where I'm in the Ducati and then I clap and then all of a sudden the S1000 appears. <laughs> well, it went according to plan until I got home and I listened to the audio and unfortunately the audio did not come out well because the mic wasn't picked up by the GoPro even though it was plugged in. Here I am with this beautiful dirty librarian. It is a dirty librarian because it's the introverted stepsister to the Ducati. The Ducati is the flamboyant red dress wearing, high heels, mini skirt, bombshell that gets attention everywhere she goes in this bike. The introverted librarian that's kind of shy but hangs out with a small group of people and doesn't talk a lot but she's gorgeous as hell but she doesn't get as much attention like the Ducati. 
So in this portion of the video, we're going to be talking about what makes this bike different from the Ducati. So with that said, let's get going. Here's one thing that makes this motorcycle stand out from any Ducati Panigale that's out there. You get a fuel and a range indicator, which makes it very, very convenient. Not only do you know how many miles per gallon that you're doing, but it also tells you how much range and what the capacity is for the fuel tank. I like that a lot. I like that a whole lot. And I think that's a good segue for this video because this motorcycle is so user friendly. It's not really a loud motorcycle. And at first instance, when you're riding this thing, it's such an easy motorcycle to ride that you forget that you're in a motorcycle that has 205 horsepower and can probably reach speeds of 200 miles an hour. You, you completely forget about all that stuff. The way this motorcycle gets on with the business of speed is something I've never seen before. You have no idea how fast this motorcycle will go until you get there. And then you realize that you're in stratospheric speeds. All right, that was interesting. Watch out for teenage girls after a day of surfing. Okay, so that's two close calls with this motorcycle. <laughs> Hopefully we don't get any more of these. So anyways, you have no idea how fast you go on this motorcycle until you actually get there. It is so smooth, so butter smooth. When you turn on this motorcycle, you have no idea that you're riding a 205 horsepower monster. And you have no idea that this thing is capable of doing 200 miles an hour. As I demonstrated before, the turning circle on this motorcycle is very small, making it so user friendly. The thing with BMW is, as I've, as I've learned, is that first and foremost, they make a motorcycle that's easy to live with. And then they concentrate on secondary things such as speed and handling and everything else. I've had my fair share of experiences with uh, sport bikes over the entire time that I've been riding motorcycles, which does not happen to be a lot of time. Only about uh, 12 months. Yes, sir, Bob, only about 12 months. But I've ridden more motorcycles than most people would ride in an entire lifetime. So that being said, I've experienced what it feels like to have muscle aches and pains and uh, arm pump and everything that you can imagine on and off the track. And I gotta tell you something, this is so much different than the Ducati Panigale in that it is a comfortable bike to ride. It is very, very comfortable to ride. And you don't get those symptoms that you would with a Panigale motorcycle. When you hop aboard a Ducati Panigale, as I mentioned, it is loud. You feel every single thing. It is an extrovert of the party. As an extreme extrovert, I'm talking level 10 extreme extrovert, you are the loudest person, you are the class clown. And that is the best way I can describe the Ducati versus this one here. A bit subdued, a bit quiet. Doesn't need to show off so much. Yeah, it's got passing power for days. Don't worry about any car that comes in front of you. You can definitely overtake anything you want. Anything on the road you can take. Doesn't matter what it is, you can take whatever you want. It's, uh, it's almost indecent how much power this motorcycle has. You have no idea that you're doing 100 miles an hour and then you look down at the speedometer and you're way above that. It's very creepy how it gets there and uh, it's just such an easy bike to ride. The quick shifter is smooth as butter, like so smooth. For a leader bike, it downplays the fact that it could be playful. It downplays the fact that it's fast, it's agile, it's nimble. Yes, you look at it, it's red. And if you look at the M Sport Edition, it's got three different colors, racing colors. Yes, in that aspect, yes, it looks very fast. But you're riding the motorcycle, you have no idea. Or even if it's capable of that until you twist the throttle just a tad and then it reminds you how ferocious it can be, how playful it can be. It's just one of those bikes that I've never experienced before because every single time I got behind a leader bike, it's very loud, it vibrates a lot, it's very harsh to ride, not very comfortable. This bike definitely changes all that for me because it, number one, it's upright. It feels like that ZX-6R that I had for the entire week. 
And number two, it doesn't vibrate all that much. No matter what gear you're in, it's not a vibrate bike. It doesn't, the seat under you doesn't vibrate that much. And not to mention, it doesn't get very hot. But it is a very quick bike, no matter what. This motorcycle is so easy to turn. The steering is so freaking light and flickable. Uh, I, I did not expect to, to get that kind of reaction from this kind of motorcycle where it's a leader bike and it's just easy to toss and turn. Almost feels like a 600 class motorcycle. And uh, it's just one of those astonishing things that I would never have imagined before riding this motorcycle. I have watched reviews of this motorcycle where, they, where they've talked about it, but I've never experienced it firsthand until recently. I'm, I'm just blown away by it. It's a really tough decision, you know, Ducati or, or uh, S1000RR. I would definitely uh, call this motorcycle the gentleman's race bike. Somebody who wants it for comfort more than, you know, 100% red-blooded, extreme hormones, testosterone-filled, rip your shirt off like, like the Incredible Hulk that the Ducati makes you feel. The, uh, the quality, the build on the Ducati is, is superior than the S1000RRs, but the Ducati is also a lot more expensive. And uh, with all the options, the M Sport version is going to run you about $23,000, but uh, the, the top of the line Ducati is going to run you somewhere around $27,900 or $28,000. So you are spending a whole lot more, more money, but it also exhilarates you that much more than this motorcycle does. I think, but, but I think though you, you can change all that with this motorcycle by giving it a tune. Uh, full exhaust with this motorcycle and a tune probably run you a couple thousand dollars But man, you'd have a bike that's transformed. It wouldn't be quiet anymore as it is right now Like right now I'm hearing the engine with a combination of the exhaust But uh, that would completely change once you put an exhaust on this a full exhaust <laughs> Oh man and it does it like without effort man the smooth sh the smooth shifting on this motorcycle is tremendous I think we'll park it here for a bit. Well, my dudes, we are done for this episode. I kind of don't regret screwing up the bit, the first bit. And I like the, the fact that I started all over again because it gave me another chance to ride this motorcycle. And any day that I ride an S1000RR is a special day. I love this motorcycle. I love it. It's great for every single day. And it can become a bad girl whenever you want her to be. It's a great motorcycle. It's It's got a dual personality to her. Alright guys, thank you for so much for watching once again. I will catch you guys on the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.